The cranial nerves. The examination of the cranial nerves is best performed with the patient sitting over the edge of the bed. Begin with the usual general inspection of the head and neck. Look for craniotomy scars, neurofibromas, facial asymmetry, ptosis, proptosis, skew deviation of the eyes, or inequality of the pupils. The cranial nerves are then examined roughly in the order of their number. The first, olfactory nerve, can be tested with bottles of substances with non-pungent smells, but it is usually enough to ask the patient if there has been any problem with his or her sense of smell. Have you noticed any problems with your sense of smell? No. The second, optic nerve, is tested first by assessing visual acuity. Do you normally wear spectacles to read? The patient should wear spectacles if he normally uses them. Each eye is tested separately, while the other is covered with a small you card. You hold that out at arm's length and read the lowest line that you can see clearly for me. L-C-Y-R-E-H-B. Fantastic. Okay, we'll just swap over. If you can cover your eye there. And just hold that one out. L-C-Y-R-E-N-B. Terrific. The visual fields are examined by confrontation using a hat pin. The examiner's head should be level with the patient's head. Just cover head. up your eye for Each me. Each eye is tested separately. Just keep focusing on my nose. I'm going to introduce this pin into the field. I want you to tell me as soon as you see it, say yes. 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 Excellent. We'll swap over. Okay. And again, just keep focusing on my nose. If visual acuity is very poor, the fields are mapped using the fingers. If possible, the lights are then dimmed to enlarge the pupils and the fundi and especially the optic discs are examined with the ophthalmoscope. Begin with the plus 20 setting, which should bring the cornea into focus, and gradually rack down to naught to see the fundi. The patient should stare into the distance. The examiner should use the right eye for the patient's right eye and the left eye for the left. The third, fourth and sixth nerves control pupil size and eye movements. The examiner should note the shape, relative sizes of the pupils and any associated ptosis. The examiner uses a pocket torch and shines the light from the side to gauge the reaction of the pupils to light. Assess quickly both the direct and consensual responses. Look for an afferent pupillary defect by moving the torch in an arc from pupil to pupil. Test accommodation by asking the patient to look into the distance and then at the hat pin placed about 30 centimetres from the nose. Now assess eye movements with both eyes first, getting the patient to follow the pin in each direction. Look for failure of movement and for nystagmus. Ask about diplopia in each direction. Is he double at all? No. Very good. The fifth nerve has sensory and motor divisions. Begin by testing the corneal reflexes gently and ask the now patient if the touch of the cotton wool on the cornea can be felt. And just to, um, tell me if you can the tell sensory me. component of this reflex is the fifth nerve and the motor component the seventh. Now look over this way slightly. And just tell me if you can feel Test it. facial sensation in the three divisions, ophthalmic, maxillary and mandibular. The front here? Yes. Test pain sensation with the pin first and, yes and map any area of sensory loss from dull to sharp. Yes. 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 Test light touch as well so that sensory dissociation can be detected so if present. Very, um, touch very uh, gently with the cotton. Just get you to say yes when you feel it. Yes. 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 Examine the motor division of the fifth nerve by asking the patient to clench the teeth okay. while you Just feel the you masseter to, um, muscles. Clench very hard for me. Then get the patient to open the mouth while you attempt to force it closed. This is not possible if the open pterygoid muscles are working. A unilateral lesion causes the jaw to deviate towards the weaker, affected side. Test the jaw jerk. This is increased in cases of pseudobulbar palsy. Now test the muscles of facial expression, the seventh nerve. Ask the patient to look up and wrinkle the forehead. Look for loss of wrinkling and feel the muscle strength by pushing down on each side. This is preserved in an upper motor neurone lesion because of bilateral cortical representation of these muscles. Close your eyes nice and tight for me. Squeeze them tight as hard as you can. 
That's great. And Ask the patient to show his or her teeth and look for asymmetry. Now test hearing, the eighth nerve. Whisper softly a number about 60 centimeters away from each ear. Distract the other ear by rubbing your finger lightly over the other auricle. 14. 14. Now perform tests to differentiate nerve deafness from conductive deafness. Rene's test involves the use of a 256 hertz tuning fork. This is placed on the mastoid process and then moved near the external ear. Since air conduction is better than bone conduction, it should then sound louder, unless there is conductive deafness. Can you feel it there? Yes. Tell me, is it louder here? Yes. Weber's test involves use of the same fork placed in the centre of the forehead. The tone should seem to the patient to come from the middle of the forehead. If there is nerve deafness, the tone is heard more on the side of the normal ear. If there is conductive deafness, the tone is heard better on the side of the unaffected ear. Examine the external auditory canals and the eardrums if this is indicated. The ninth and tenth nerves are examined together. Look at the palate and note any uvular displacement. Ask the patient to say ah and look for symmetrical movement of the soft palate. A unilateral lesion causes the uvula to be drawn towards the unaffected, normal side. Test gently for sensation on the palate. I'm just going to the touch the back nerve. of your throat. It is not Tell really necessary to test the gag reflex. Ask the patient to speak to assess for hoarseness and ask the patient to cough. A bovine cough suggests bilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve lesions. The twelfth nerve supplies the motor supply to the tongue. Like to just have a look at your While examining the mouth, mouth, inspect the tongue for wasting and fasciculation. Next, ask the patient to protrude the tongue. Stick your tongue out. With a unilateral lesion, the tongue deviates towards the weaker, affected side. The eleventh nerve provides the motor supply to the trapezius and sternomastoid muscles. Look over towards the wall. Push against my hand. And look over towards this way. Push against my hand. That's fine. Look for torticollis. Test the strength of these two muscles on each side.